Hi, seems that I can't cop a break when it comes to repairs. This Fluke 3000 multimeter that you uh, saw in the video that had the leaky energizers in it. Um, well, I went to do a repair, start a repair troubleshooting video. So I connected an external uh, power supply because you can't really hook up the batteries and probe it at the same time. So you can see it up there on the um, screen. I'm feeding in four and a half uh, volts, which is the nominal uh, thing for three uh, single cell uh, batteries and a set a current limit of 100 milliamps. And well, let's switch it on, shall we? Here we go. I got the, the knob under here is a bit how you do them without um, being in the thing, but let's switch it on. Uh, wah, 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 wah. It works. Um, it wasn't working the other day. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what the heck's going on here. It's working. It's working just fine. Um, let's give it a, a prod and a poke. It could be an intermittent veer or something like that, but I'm not, not seeing it, giving it a good, good hard bend there. It's, it's quite horrific actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd expect maybe it to, um, flake out because of the, but seriously, this, this range switch on here, like it, it, it wobbles. It wobbles from side to side. Um, it's not designed to sit there flapping around in the breeze. It's designed to be in whatever, uh, containment thing is in the um, case and um, it seems to like I haven't actually tested it yet but there's volts DC so I guess we can apply some external voltages to that and see if it works so I'll just get a 9 volt battery here I can just whack it across the uh, terminals 8.88 there you go no whackers so let's whack that on there let's whack it on there 8.88 bang on that works yeah, I mean, that, that looks absolutely horrific with all the solder mask removed and these, these two resistors here. Um, I'm tempted just to leave them in there. Like, my first step for tr troubleshooting this thing would have been to, uh, well, A, apply the voltage like this, uh, make sure it's not actually working. I did actually test this and it did flicker. Like, the LEDs come on and it, it just didn't do anything, but it, it works fine now. Minus 8.88. Works in both directions. <laughs> Come on, come on, I can't cop a break. So, yeah, this, this seems to be working just fine. I mean, you know, it's pretty horrific, um, <laughs> the, the damage down in there. But those, those, those two resistors, technically, like, there should, in theory, be nothing wrong with those. Because, like, yeah, it, okay, it's worn away the top enamel or whatever. Um, uh, you know, that black epoxy enamel thing that's on the top i don't know what it is an enamel i think it's some sort of like enamel paint or something like that um but the actual the actual resistors seems to be fine i mean you know granted it's only measuring vo uh, dc volts but you know i this is worth putting back together um it's difficult to test like in a state like this so i'm tempted just to put it back together and then um run run it through my various calibrators and stuff and if I can't duplicate that, maybe, maybe it's just time, and I don't know, maybe there is another, an intermittent contact in there somewhere, but, um, I don't know, no amount of pressure seems to be at least turning it off and on. I'll give it a, I'll give it a warp there. Seems, seems pretty rock solid. I think it's good. I'd, I'd actually be surprised if this thing uh, fails anything. Somebody asked this, or a few people I think asked this in the comments. Uh, will it require a recalibration after like cleaning it all up? And, and no, uh, basically. The things that determine the, uh, the calibration of the meter are the voltage reference standard, the analog to digital converter, and then things like the um, hybrid resistor divider network down in here. And you know, it, that's like you know there's not a huge amount extra like that's for like your basic dc and ohms and stuff like that you know because this is like cleaned up reasonably well now if you remember from the previous video when i actually uh put the batteries in there are two leds on the front that actually um turned on like i think this briefly flashed blue or whatever and this one the high voltage warning thing flashed uh, red, but we're getting nothing on the display. And the other day when I uh, did this, just briefly, I, I hooked it up and the LEDs, they actually, they did actually flash on. Let's see if they do it now. Here we go. 
yeah, they, they briefly, you saw them, briefly flash on, but I got absolutely nothing on the LCD, whereas now, I do. And no, it's it's not the ribbon cable. The ribbon cable's always been, um, you know, perfectly aligned and in and everything. Um, I can, can I make that? Yeah, I can make that change. <laughs> By putting my finger on, finger on there. <laughs> Check it out. Of course I can. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah, because all that copper's um, exposed now, but I don't know. So maybe it was working and, uh, like, the actual processor and everything was working because those LEDs flash the same when you boot it up now as they did back then when we were getting nothing on the screen, but now we are getting the display. So maybe the meter was actually working, but the display part of it wasn't working. But there's, like, there's nothing. I mean, the MSP would be driving the um, display directly, there's, like, the battery, the leakage didn't get anywhere near that. So I I can't see how that would be a problem. So, you know, and I can wiggle that around. Wiggle that around until the cows come home. Wiggle, 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 yeah. And it's just, like, it's it's not the ribbon. So, uh -huh. Sorry, I just realised before that you couldn't actually see the on-screen uh, display there. Now you can. You can see the four and a half volts and uh, 100 milliamp uh, current limit. And if we, oh, all right, we're gonna switch it off and then switch it off, then on again, ta-da. And it's drawing like four milliamps. That's the only resolution we have on this National, National Instruments uh, virtual bench thing. But yeah, you know, it draws four or five milliamps or whatever and everything's fine. All right, let's plug it in and see what we get. In. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll put the cover on. There we go. Will it work? Yep. Works just fine. Hello, McFly. Fail, McFly. Fail. Well, right off the bat, I just uh, powered up my uh, calibrator here, and it's, it's bang on. So, like, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> of course it's bang on. 10 millivolts. Yeah, spot on, uh, voltage and current, like, I, like I, I guarantee you, it's spot on, on all those ranges, no wackers. There it is, one milliamp DC, no worries, in fact, um, yeah, uh, those buttons, um, they all still, I think they all still work, hold, min max, all still works fine, range still works, backlight still works, select, and up and down arrows, it's, it's all beeping, it all works. 10 milliamps, 100, oh, 100 milliamps is over range. There we go, 100 milliamps. Emission resistance, hook up my calibrator box, my 1K, yep, near enough. My 10K, yeah, <laughs> near enough, there's nothing in it, really. I mean, this is not a super accurate meter on resistance, I don't think, but uh, yeah, that's, that's good enough. That's within spec. And last, and but certainly not least, Capacitance. There's my capacitance standard, 10 nanofarads. It's, um, yeah, we don't get any more resolution than that, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, that, that works a treat. And my AC reference standard, it's practically, yep, it's bang on and to a volt there. We can go up to uh, 10 volt range, operate it again. It needs to stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. But, yeah, there we go. We're getting our 10 volts. No worries. I can even go up to 100 volts if you really want. Everyone's keen. There you go, 99.9. That's almost bang on. And even the high voltage warning LED works. And I just went to find the uh, wireless, um, uh, you know, one of the wireless adapters for this. Um, and uh, sure enough, low battery. Um, I've left the batteries in this one too. Uh, fingers crossed, I've taken the screw out, but I have not, not popped it. I don't even know how you bloody get this thing out. Um, come on. There we, there we go. Oh, oh, it's got coals in it, <laughs> which is our um, shop brand here. It's like a, uh, you know, the no-name um, supermarket brand here in Australia. Coles? Oh, no, thankfully. That's good. Well, I was worried there for a minute uh, that it wouldn't connect to this thing, um, and I was wondering why the heck it wouldn't uh, connect. This is a uh, CNX uh, thing, which is a different wireless system to the F FC, the Fluke Connect, which is what 
This one is. So this is the FC, the Flute Connect system. Um, so yeah, it's very different. So anyway, I do have one of these uh, loopy uh, current clamp things. And yep, sure enough, ID number one, it powered up and it connected and it displayed. So we can select, can we select that? I forget how to use this, yep. And there we go, yep. Point two, it matches it over here. So I, I won't even bother. There, there you go. I think you saw it flicker and match that. So you can put some currenty through here like this. And uh, yeah, that'll show up. But the wireless works. No worries. I think this thing is 100% functional. Whether it remains that way, eh, I don't know. That remains to be seen. You did see some of the uh, Vias in there in the previous video that looked a bit black and yeah, not that great. But um. Yep, I, so I don't know why this, when I powered it up the other day, it, it got nothing on the screen at all and just flashed uh, the two LEDs on power up, but um, now it just, it works fully. So I, I've got no clue whatsoever. Um, and you remember, I powered it up before I took the thing apart. So it's not like it was a physical, you know, like, as I said, like the LCD, uh, flat flex connector or anything like that. So, I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is actually uh, conformally coat this so that uh, you know there's not the just the bare exposed uh, copper there. Now I could like um, get the board out like uh, mask off like I could actually use masking tape and mask everything off and stuff like that and because the only uh, stuff I've got is this uh, chem tools uh, conformal coat uh, clear conformal uh, acrylic uh, clear conformal coating spray. I think like I do have some um, photo imageable uh, photo curing solder mask um, somewhere but I can't find it so uh, yeah I'm gonna have to uh, go with this where uh, yeah the green I got the solder mask you put it on and you just um, apply a UV uh, torch and then it uh, actually uh, cures that you don't need the UV uh, with this stuff so like it's really messy like it's designed for like large boards and stuff like that so I don't want to have to mask everything off and stuff so what I'm going to do is just spray some down and then just use a cotton bud to just dab it on because we're not talking about a very big area here at all. Now you should do this with uh, ventilation, but I, I'll, I'll be gone in a minute anyway, so I'm just going to do it, and uh, she'll be right. But don't uh, don't follow me. So I'm just going to spray some onto a thing down here, and then I'm going. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely want to. And then so I've cleaned it all up um, as best I can. But anyway, let's let's just dab that on. Just apply that on. It's fairly easy, don't want to get anything on the contacts at all. And there we go. We can even put, I won't put it over the resistors, I don't think, but I could. All right, I could put it over the resistors if you wanted to. But really, that's the main, main area of concern is all around there. And that's pretty much done. We're, uh, geez, I think that's, that's drying pretty fast. Um, yeah, there's nothing else like taken off. So I do have my air purifier. So we could probably do with a bit more up there, maybe. And see, there we go. We've got some conformal coat on there now. That looks like it'll dry. That feels like it's it's tacking. So um, yeah, that feels like it'll um, do very quickly. So I'll be gone. I'll get out of here so I don't breathe any more of this stuff in. Uh, I, I literally have like a mask within reach, like a proper... <laughs> ventilator mask with and eh, she'll be right put air in your chest um so there you go conformally coat i'll just let that dry um and i'll put it back together and what am i going to do um i'll put this um i don't know for a buck on ebay maybe on my ev blog store a dollar <laughs> um the starting from a dollar bid um and let people bid on it if you want it i've got no use for it really so i i've yeah, i should have put it on the should have sold it donkeys years ago but there you go um it like, yeah, it's not, I know, you could probably repair it a bit better, yeah, but, you know, I, I'm not going to spend any more time on this, and it just works, so, until it fails again, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, this isn't too stinky, this stuff, actually, it's pretty good, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll retest it afterwards, but this stuff has got high dielectric, you know, uh, it's designed for this sort of stuff, so, yeah, no worries, um, thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time.